Welcome to online worship for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches. My name is Pastor Catherine, and I greet you from wherever you are joining us from this day. Today, on the third Sunday of Easter, the first Sunday of a new month, we are meeting God once again in creation as we continue to go forward claiming and proclaiming together that we are standing on holy ground that this whole earth is holy because God's hands have been on it, shaping it and molded it, that we ourselves are holy because God has shaped and molded us as well. So may we open ourselves up this day to how God may be speaking and how God may be guiding us. I invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. The words will be on the screen. Your responses are in bold. Come, take off your shoes, for where we stand is holy ground. Come to connect and recenter, for the spirit of our Maker is in this place. Come to be still, we come to know our God. Come, care for the gift of a life sustaining planet. For all the earth is holy ground. Let us worship God through song.
Will you join your voices and hearts with mine in a word of prayer? Let us pray together. God, just as you called our ancestors of faith, so will you call each one of us to speak and act on your behalf in our world today. Forgive us when we are hesitant to follow, when we question your call or make excuses for our abilities, when we complain about our lack of time or hoard our resources. Give us courage to step out in faith, to follow where you lead without hesitation or fear, trusting that your presence goes with us and that you will provide all that we need. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the book of Isaiah. Hear now the word of God. Therefore, my people will know my name on that day. I'm the one who promises it. I'm here. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our little one loves water just like his mama. Last summer, he discovered the creek running behind his godparents' house, wanting to wade and explore it for as long as he could. A few months later, he and I went back to visit. The weather was cooler, yet he went straight to that creek. He remembered it was there. He almost jumped in with his shoes and his socks still on. You would have thought he hurt something the way he screamed as I held him to quickly peel his socks and shoes off because I know there was nothing that could stop him from wanting to go into that water. An hour or so later, toes wrinkled and blue, I coursed him out with snacks, but as soon as he got warm and some food in his belly, he took off running straight back to the creek. Take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. We tend to return to the places that feel safe. 
even as frogs and little fish and the occasional water snake went by, our little one knew he was somewhere safe and dare I say magical. We all have those places, those spaces that bring us peace and at times of great need, even clarity. We get comfortable in those places and let down our guard, being open to what could happen. Those spaces, those places calm our spirits, ground our hearts, and root us more firmly in the world. Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. This Easter season here at Broadway and Port Colden, we sit with the idea that we are standing on holy ground, that all God's, all that God has created is worthy of praise and honor, that as a community of faith, we have been asked and tasked to steward, to care for creation in all that we do, our worship, our programming, our silence. This idea of holy ground being ever present invites us to a deeper understanding and awareness of the world around us with our whole beings aware of the world around us. To be able to witness God in the eyes of another, to be able to witness God in a blade of grass, to be able to witness God in community, covenanting to journey with a child on their baptism day. We find that holy ground is actually not as um, hard to understand as we sometimes make it out to be. We find the use of holy ground in the story, the narrative of Moses found in the book of Exodus. We witness the rise to prophetic leadership of the man we call Moses born during a time of bondage in Egypt. Moses was hid by his birth mother in fear of an edict from the Pharaoh that all male Israelite babies under two years were to be killed because that Pharaoh had heard a prophecy and was trying to save himself. This fear of hers led her to send Moses down the Nile in a basket when he was a few months old, where he was discovered by Pharaoh's daughter and then raised in the palace. As an adult, he killed an Egyptian he saw beating a Hebrew slave and hid the body of that Egyptian. And out of fear of what he did, he runs away, leaving all that he knows and is taken in by the priest of Midian, Jethro. Moses marries one of Jethro's daughters named Zipporah. He settles and builds a life with them. And so we find at the beginning of Exodus chapter 3 that Moses is tending the flock of Jethro near the mountain of God, a holy place. The angel of the Lord appears in flames of fire within a bush, a bush that did not burn. And so Moses sees this amazing sight and makes his way to see. And as he gets closer, the Lord calls out his name from that bush. Moses responds to the voice and is told by the the voice of God to take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. That action led to uh, an Uh, call to uh, prophetic leadership for Moses, the freeing of people. This has been the call for millennia. Take off your shoes, root yourself, ground yourself where you are. Be aware that you are standing in holy ground, that God is here. It is in Moses's reverence of that holy space that he is given instruction and the tools to help save the people of Israel from their bondage in Egypt. His response impacted the lives of many and continues to impact lives today, all because he chose to honor and devote himself to God's guidance and to give the respect that is due to the holy ground that God has created. Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. 
this simple request made to Moses, made to us to today in our day to day, invites us to be present awe-inspired, sensitive to the many ways God is at work in the world. But what does this mean for us? What we are being asked today, friends, is to consider when have you felt you were in the presence of God? Was it a clear space where uh, like clear as Moses's burning bush where he was very aware something miraculous was happening? Was it somewhere something that was stirred within you that you realized was God's presence around you? There are moments when we are clear where we are clear that God is speaking or guiding our actions that we are in the presence of God. In those moments, we are transformed, led to wholeness, and become more aware after that moment of the ways that God has and is revealing and speaking to us and around us. These are the moments when we have felt God's presence that challenge us to confront injustice, to speak against violence, and to spread the good news. Our passage from Isaiah is a prophetic message of peace and hope to the captive Jerusalem. These people have suffered defeat, seen their beloved Jerusalem destroyed, watched many be killed, and are now living in exile in Babylonia. A long exile that has produced new generations who only know what had happened from story and only know what is as captivity. So there was a communal crisis of faith happening for the people of Jerusalem, people of Israel, and cries had begun to arise to God that God had abandoned them, that maybe they should put their trust in the Babylonian gods instead because it seems to be working out for other folk. So these are the people that the prophet Isaiah is speaking to. Chapter 52 begins with a call to them to stop feeling sorry for themselves. The prophet tells them that their captivity, their exile is coming to an end. He tells them how God is getting ready to change everything, but only asks for their willing hearts and trusting in what God is doing. And Isaiah then says this, therefore, my people will know on that day, my name on that day. I'm the one who promises it. I'm here. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. What Isaiah tells the people is that God will be taking such decisive action that there will be no doubt of God's power and strength, that God is getting ready to take decisive action among them. God, Isaiah is also telling them that God has been at work while they were in exile. God has been fulfilling prophecy and setting things in motion to bless generations to come. The good news brought by the messenger in these words is the gospel promise that we are familiar with as well, that God loves us with a love that cannot be defeated or cast aside. This is still our good news. Our God rules, not through power or shame or hatred or fear, but through love. So we are invited. Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. While people throughout the Bible have marked holy places with stacks of rocks or other markers giving names that tell others what happened there, this uh, can miss the point of calling a place holy. All of earth is holy ground. Wars and violence may cause damage, but they eventually end. And so we are being called to ask in our day to day where we are. When have we felt? When have you felt you were in 
the presence of God. See, in the midst of his regular duties of watching the flocks, Moses took time apart to commune with God, to give honor, to be present in a sacred moment. He didn't say, wait, God, give me a second to find somebody else to watch these animals. He dropped everything to be present in that moment because he knew God was there. There's something about slowing down walking on the earth, being in the created world that causes us to focus more clearly. It slows our minds and help us process thoughts and emotion. And so what we find from Moses's actions, and we find too from the words of peace spoken to the people of Israel by the prophet Isaiah, is this call that connecting with creation can help to calm us, recenter us, And even heal us with whatever we are carrying. During the height of pandemic franticness, a a food blogger I follow posted something about grounding. That she was publicly committed to spend 30 minutes every day for 30 days barefoot in her backyard. I don't know much about grounding, but I do know a little bit. While still under review by the medical community, the practice of grounding says that we give off uh, electrical charges from our bodies, and so does the earth. The earth gives off its own set of electrical charges, and that our continued separation from nature as a society, um, or as society has evolved, has harmed us because we have not been able to reconnect and recharge with the earth. The act of grounding invites an individual to reconnect self to the earth with one of the easiest ways being walking barefoot outside. Now again, while I don't understand much of the science behind this theory, I do believe that there is some value for us in this practice. Because we find this invitation, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. Today, we are claiming that God's spirit is in everything God has created. And so this week, I invite you to spend five minutes each day outside, or at least with the windows open, not doing anything, not having any end goal, but just being present in nature. If you feel so bold in those five minutes, I invite you to take off your shoes and put your feet in the grass. But I challenge you, whatever you do, however you engage with the created world this week, I challenge you to be present, to feel the breeze, to hear the sounds around, to smell the flowers or whatever other smells, to let the sunlight touch your fingertips and warm them, to take off your shoes because you are standing on holy ground. Friends, let us pray. God of fire, you are a force beyond human understanding. With awe-inspired power, we cannot understand. Redeeming God out of the flames of your creation, your voice calls, marking us as your own. Yet there are times when we choose to ignore your voice and listen instead to our own needs and desires and those that challenge our faith from within the world. For the times we've hurt you, forgive us. For the times we've hurt others, forgive us. For the times we've hurt ourselves, forgive us. For we are made in your image and it is very good. Loving creator, in your forgiveness to us, you offer again your invitation to know your love, to be loved, and to respond to your call. May we hear your voice, witness your guidance, and find our place within your creation. Amen.
my prayer for each of us this week is that we choose to be present where we are. We choose to turn our brains off from our to do list and for what is happening or what we are waiting for and to be present to choose to be present to feel whatever we are feeling to uh, experience how the world has impacted us to notice the tightness in our shoulders and the aches and pains the day may hold to notice the lingering smells of a delicious meal to be able to feel God, wherever we are, that is our hope this day. So may we encounter God in the ordinary spaces and places of our life, the comfortable places that bring us peace and calm. May we be able to witness God at work, God at work in our lives, in the world, and in spite of us. May we be able to claim that God's holy ground is wherever we are because God is in everything that is created. So may we go into this day and this week in this world, knowing that God goes with us in all that we do. May we go into this day and this week and this world emboldened by the one who goes with us. But most importantly, may we go and may we go in peace. Amen. Amen.